Welcome to the Nonprofit Report, your weekly update on nonprofit organizations, issues, and leaders. I'm your host, Mark Oppenheim, and this week we will talk with Goodwill of Southern California's leadership on the work that they conduct transforming lives. This will be a two-part uh, series, and we're going to be chatting today with guests Patrick McClenahan, Goodwill of Southern California's president and CEO, Jessica Lal, a board member of Goodwill of Southern California, and also the CEO of the Los Angeles Center City Association, and Simon Lopez, Goodwill's chief impact officer. So thank you all for joining us. I'm so excited about, about this show, the whole idea of what you do, your uh, origins, your incredible impact in Southern California. So um, why don't we start with you, Patrick? Uh, let's talk a little bit about Goodwill, its history. We all know about the retail stores and the donation centers, but you're so much more. Could you just give us an overview of your operations uh, down in Southern California? Great, thanks, Mark. It's, uh, we always welcome an opportunity to talk about the reason why we exist. You're right, everybody knows us for our stores and a place to donate your things. Um, but the, the reason why we exist is to transform lives through the power of work. Um, we're a, I'm a big fan of Simon Sinek and his book, Starts With Why. And we spend a lot of time talking about that. The center of, of everything is the reason why we exist. And, and the premise is that all good leaders, all good organizations start with a, with a keen sense of why. And then the what and the how always reflect to the why. So internally, it's, it's really important that our staff, our team, our board of directors all have a keen sense of the, of the reason why. So we can do strategic plans, we can, we can measure our results, we can, we can make uh, decisions, set goals and objectives, all based on that reason why. Um, the reason why for, and it's also good externally because we want people to come alongside and help us in this mission of transforming lives. So if they understand the reason why, people will come along and partner with us. The reason why started 120 years ago for Goodwill with Edgar Helms. Uh, he was a Methodist pastor in Boston, concerned about poor people in his community who didn't have clothes, um, sufficient clothes or housing or, or food. And he had the idea of going to wealthy neighborhoods and asking for clothes that need to be mended or, uh, or small appliances that need to be repaired. And then he would teach that skill. And so those people in need would learn a new skill and they'd have a sustainable job opportunity. And that's how Goodwill started. It was the idea of a hand up and an opportunity for people that really needed help. And that's what we're doing today. So, so the important thing here, and, and I, I don't think I can emphasize this enough. Um, the important thing here is that the purpose is independence. The purpose is work. The purpose is not codependence. The purpose isn't even retail operations or or recycling of of stuff that we no longer use um, for those of us who have stuff. Yes, it is about independence, right? That's right. But all everything that we do goes into that. Um, today we have a hundred donation centers. We have eighty retail stores another 20 boutiques and bookstores, clearance centers. All of that operation is part of our social enterprise, both directly to put people to work. We put over 3,000 people to work. Many of them, it's a stepping stone for their career, a stepping stone for them to learn and get trained. In fact, last year, we had over 6,700 people on our payroll at, a diff at different times. Uh, but any given time, it's 3,000. Um, and so that's, that, all of that goes towards both directly employing people but then the resources that we get provide us with the resources to support Simon and his team. Um, career centers, we have, we have uh, employment centers, 11 of those throughout our region. We cover 32,000 square miles in Southern California, most of LA County, Riverside, San Bernardino counties. And, uh, and Simon's team is passionate about serving those with the greatest barriers to employment, veterans, people coming out of prison, at-risk youth, people with disabilities, um, our neighbors who are homeless. Um, and so our, the team passionately provides counseling, training, job placement, job coaching. And along with government funding and generous foundation gifts uh, and individual gifts, that resource that we get from our, the sale of those donated goods all goes towards uh, putting people to work and supporting our workforce development team. And Jessica, you're, you're a CEO of another organization. You're the CEO of the Los Angeles uh, Central City Association. You're a pretty busy person. Um, and you yet are volunteering to uh, be part of the body that, that functions as 
the oversight body and actually the, the, the body that hires and fires the CEO. So, uh, so you're, why are you spending your time at, with this particular organization? How does that connect to your work at the Central City Association? Definitely. Well, thanks, Mark. And it's really an honor to be here as a representative of the Goodwill Board. For those who aren't familiar with CCA, CCA is a membership-based advocacy organization that through advocacy, influence, and engagement works to enhance downtown's vibrancy and increase investment in the region. So we tackle issues related to homelessness, housing, economic development, and we bring together broad-based coalitions of people to advance solutions in these areas. So for me, when I first met Patrick, working uh, getting to know more about Goodwill, I also thought it was just a place where I would go donate uh, clothes and furniture and whatnot. And when I learned more about Goodwill's mission to put people back to work as a means for permanent sustainability to be able to maintain homes and their family, um, I was super intrigued because on a daily basis, I'm working with 300 companies across LA County from banks, real estate developers, architects, and they're constantly asking how can they be a part of the solution. And what, for me, the Patrick and what we talked about was the, the connecting and, and building partnerships to give people jobs. And so they can maintain that independence. So our city can thrive by putting people back to work, our economy can thrive. And so for me, it was a, a natural uh, connection, not uh, only to be inspired by Patrick's vision and what Simon and others on the team are doing, um, it's such an operation that Goodwill is putting together. And those of us on the board, I think, are each trying to bring support for different areas of the different um, projects and business lines that the organization has going. So for CCA, uh, you know, Goodwill is a member of CCA, being able to connect people and ideas and, and really jobs to individuals for people who are looking for training was a no-brainer. So you're placing your networks at the disposal of Goodwill. You are benefiting from the connections that you are forging with Goodwill and with other board members. Um, it's really a virtuous circle. And then that leads to Simon, who is focused on impact. Uh, Simon, talk about how you think about impact and about the, the range of operations. Because on Thursday, we're going to be talking with some of the frontline uh, people and some of your partners. Um, let's set that discussion up right now. Sure. Um, well, I'll start by sharing a, a line that, that Patrick and I use um, often when we're, when we're out talking to partners and groups and, and, um, and other networks, which is, you know, our work starting with the, you know, the, the belief that every single person in the community has value and has talent. And, and it's our responsibility as, as a community, as a network of providers, to recognize that, to nurture that talent and, and help bring that, that talent to life in a way where people can find meaningful uh, purpose and employment. So when you start from, from there, um, from that perspective, um, you know, then you start to understand our work, which is you know, we, we recognize the, the unique value in every single person, the potential in every single person. So we design our, our work around that, um, and it specifically around uh, vulnerable um, and unique populations. Uh, because those are the individuals that are often misunderstood or cast aside or, or, um, or, or not served and, and resources aren't, aren't poured into those particular communities. Um, so part of our, our, our job is to make sure that services are available to those communities. They're the right kinds of services. Um, and so we do that through our employment centers. Um, we work in collaboration with um, you know, close to 100 plus other organizations, other social enterprises, um, Chrysalis, Downtown Women's Center, LGBT Center, all those organizations come to mind because um, we're all really knee deep in, in trying to serve, um, you know, these uh, vulnerable communities. Um, we do that by working with government agencies, um, you know, so our role is direct service provider, but we also consider ourselves, you um, we think that we have a responsibility to help frame the narrative and frame how resources are being used. So as, a, as an advocate and as, an, as a community leader and intermediary, so um, you know, those government um, funders, those government agencies that are trying to serve these communities, we're trying to help them serve those communities better. So we, we work in partnership with those government agencies. Um, we like to consider ourselves an expert in the field. So, um, 
you know, we, we try to do this in a collaborative way because we know that when it comes to uh, shared prosperity, when it comes to things like an equitable economic recovery, we talk about that a lot, not just an economic recovery, but we talk about an equitable economic recovery that works for everybody, um, that is inclusive of all those communities that, that we're already being left behind. And so moving ahead, you know, we, we believe with, along with a lot of others that we are so much stronger as a country, as an economy, as a community, when everybody both benefits from and contributes to that strong economic recovery. This is such an important point because we really as a people have to start seeing our self-interest fundamentally differently in the way that you all, whether it's Jessica or Patrick or you, Simon, in the way that you're talking about, right? When people are sidelined, when they're, when they're homeless, when they have no job, when they cannot use their skills and they cannot express themselves, when they're not even seen, that affects my interest. And so what you're doing is you're forming a coalition that is based in that idea and then you're creating workflows um, to address that. One of the things that is interesting is we just completed a poll which we said, what it, when you think of goodwill, what do you think of? So guess what people think of? Donations. Right? You're, you're, you're laughing, Patrick, right? The stores and the donation centers. So uh, let's set up the discussion on not the stores and the donation centers, because everybody knows about those. So if, if we took the stores and the donation centers out, and I make reference to your very important point that the stores and the, dona and the donation centers are just vehicles for your real mission, because your real mission is not retail and it's not donation centers. If you took those things out, talk about goodwill. Yeah, it's, it's, as I said before, it's transforming lives through hard work and transform, we don't transform lives. I mean, we, we, we help people get on a path to transform their lives. Right. Uh, research shows that, that only 20% of a person's health is based on health care. Uh, the majority of their health is based on having a job. The number one reason they have good health is having a job, which makes sense. Access to healthy food, clothing, roof over your head, and the health that comes with the peace of mind of knowing that I can care for myself or I can care for my family. So our fiduciary responsibility as Goodwill is to serve the community in that way, knowing that, uh, as Simon said, everyone has value, everyone has talent. And if we put our efforts towards that and use our resources towards that, it lifts the entire community. Um, and, and so we're, we're absolutely committed. I, let me just say one other thing in regards to what Simon was talking about. I think one of the reasons why people say stores and donations is I think Goodwill has had a history of kind of having the head down doing the good work and not saying, hey, look what we're doing. Um, but that's important to say, hey, look what we're doing. Um, we're, we're, we've, Simon and I and our board have been committed to, to earning a seat at the table because we're a big organization. And with our reputation and trust in the community, we can help change policies. We can help move the needle to help people that usually are forgotten. So, so that, is, that is independent of the stores and the donations, but they are an important vehicle in our social enterprise. So if I come in to your store and I say, look, I need a job. I need, I need to, to, I'm not asking for anything. I, what I need to do is I need to work. How does that function? How, does, how, how do you move someone from a desire and, and a request for support into something else. Yeah, yeah. Um, so we, we have 11 employment centers all across Los Angeles, San Bernardino, and Riverside counties. Um, so we, we cover a, a, a huge territory, um, but we have employment centers um, throughout those areas and anyone can come into those employment centers. It's, it's universal access and they can access things like um, just, just a computer to do a job search or a resume uh, they, can a they, they can access our career counselors and case managers to start doing things like an interest inventory or, or help with that resume or a discussion around what do you really want to do and where are there really opportunities right now? How many people walk in? Important conversation. How many people walk in annually to those 11 centers? Uh, last year, you know, this year is, is very different uh, like it is for everybody else. Um, last year in a full year, we served uh, about 30,000 people. We, we placed just under 8,000 people in jobs. Um, and 
the, the impact of that work was about $120 million in wage gain from the individuals coming through our centers, being able to secure a job and being able to contribute back to the local economy, about $120 million in, in wage gain. So 22,000 people were using other services, 8,000 people um, were placed directly, and you connect to a network of partners who are helping you. They're government partners. There are a lot of private partners, private business partners, other nonprofits that are part of that constellation, right? Yeah, that, that's right. Um, you know, and just to, to put this into um, kind of concrete perspective um, with some examples, you know, we're part of a, a program called LA Rise, which is which was initiated by the city of LA and in an organization called Rediff, which is a, a technical oh. assistance provider. And now they've brought in a number of social enterprises that are now serving individuals experiencing homelessness and justice involved individuals, helping them transition back into the into the workplace. So it's a very specific strategy. But that's, you know, it's a big network of, of providers and you now LA County is, is, is behind that program. Um, there are examples like employers and, and I'll use the North of Grumman, for example, who, you know, they have a, a huge operation up in the Antelope Valley. And, and a few years ago, they said, you know, we won this big contract. We need to hire between three and 500 people a year for the next five years. We're, we're doing this analysis of the local economy and the educational attainment levels here. And, you know, we're not sure if it matches up. And, and, and they said, but let's, you know, the city of Palmdale and, and Goodwill and, and Northrop Grumman and Antelope Valley College, let's have a conversation about designing a training program. You know, years later, we have now trained and placed over 300 individuals from that community. Um, and these are individuals that would not have been able to access a job like this had it not been structured in a collaborative way to meet the needs of, of that particular community. And Northrop Grumman allowed us to do that. They allowed us to design it to design it around the needs of the community and how that community can connect. Because oftentimes it can turn into a, we need this person, this kind of person right now. And it, it's not a fit as opposed to, um, hey, we need this kind of person. Can you help us build a long-term pipeline that's connected to that community? Um, so, you, you know, we do have all these amazing partnerships. Um, you know, Skid Row, uh, we have these efforts in Skid Row where we have a mobile team. Um, that works in partnership with organizations like um, social, model, social Model Recovery Systems and, and other partners there, um, and we can co-locate services. So, you know, there, there are ways to, to meet the needs of those communities, um, and I know it seems a little bit daunting. Sometimes people think about some of these um, vulnerable communities and say, well, you know, it's hard to imagine how they can connect and hard to imagine how they can contribute. Well, it's happening. It's happening um, all over our area. It's happening with other partners. So what we're trying to do is elevate those solutions because these are solutions. We're all providing solutions to a struggling economy right now. And so we're all working together to elevate those examples. That's such an important point, right? Because this is actually not only transforming lives, this is, this is how America works. When we find a company that has fallen on hard times, we, we, we jump in and we, uh, we take the materials there and we try to resuscitate that company. When we find somebody who needs help, we try to provide a helping hand. It's not, an, a, 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 uh, it's not charity, it's self-interest. So that's how you transform cities, uh, uh, right, Jessica? I mean, you are basically doing the hard work of creating the Los Angeles of the future by dealing with the problems that Los Angeles citizens uh, confront, and you're doing it together. Great. Absolutely. I mean, I, but we all agree that when everyone thrives, the city thrives. You know, we're we're all connected, and I think this the COVID nineteen pandemic has shown us, in fact, just how really connected we are. And we know that coming out of it, we're going to be in a great time of uncertainty. We don't know what the economy is going to look like, but we do know that unemployment will be affected dramatically. And I think goodwill and their, their history and their relevance and their mission to transform lives through work and to make sure that the economic recovery, there's equity within that is extremely important and something that folks are very, very concerned about whether you're in government or in business. And you know I think this organization is really poised to lead us through that recovery in very meaningful, substantial ways. Before, before COVID-19, the need was significant. Um, those that we serve, particularly the homeless, uh, you know what the issues have been in the Los Angeles and Southern California region. After COVID and during COVID, it's exponential. Right. 
So, um, and, and I want to emphasize what Simon was sharing is we can't do it alone. And, and part of our mission is, is finding like-minded partners and being thoughtful and creative to, to come up with solutions. So that's why we appreciate an opportunity like this to share our story, um, because we welcome any like-minded partner that wants to help uh, change lives. Padra, could you talk a little bit about the, uh, the very strong business model you have? Because you combine, and, and we are advocates for this, you combine multiple uh, revenue streams um, and multiple ways of, of finding uh, the resources required to serve. And it also, it also comes from the community itself, right? That's so right. talk about, I'm going to go back to the retail operation because as you say, it is, is a vehicle. So it is an employment vehicle. It is a recycling vehicle. It is a revenue vehicle. Um, it is a public awareness vehicle. Could you talk about the sophistication of the Goodwill model as a uh, perhaps a light to other organizations that are seeking to diversify their revenue, particularly in these challenging times? Yeah, it's, it's a remarkable social enterprise model. Uh, it's a remarkable retail model. Um, right now, secondhand clothing is the fastest growing segment in all of retail fashion, um, driven by millennials and Gen Z. So we can't just uh, take goods and throw them out there. And we've got to be good at marketing. We've got to be good at, at leadership. We've got to be good at problem solving. Um, we got to be good at pricing and all of those. Logistics, things. right? Logistics is incredible. To serve 80 stores who are, and, and, and 100 collection centers, which by the way, everybody's been cleaning out their closets since COVID started. So it's been an onslaught of goods, which is, which is fantastic, but it's also a huge logistics challenge. Um, so managing that, um, making sure the customers, donors feel uh, that their goods are appreciated uh, is, 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 is at the top of the list for us. And then providing a great experience, which has been a real challenge for, like, as with any, any retailer during COVID. Uh, our requirement to wear masks, our signs on the floors, all of, this, all of the protocols that we put in place, we were, we were determined to be the safest retailer in the region. Uh, in, and so knowing that our customers needed uh, a place that they felt comfortable in shopping. But it's a remarkable business model um, that requires uh, a board of directors that has that kind of business acumen and can help guide us through that. Um, but to your point, it is different revenue streams. I, and I'll, I'll touch on the, the good for the earth part. Um, this last year, 130 million pounds of recycled goods were kept out of landfills because of our reuse, selling, and recycling processes. So it serves a great, great community need as well through sustainability. And you are converting these workflows into revenue and jobs. Um, and employment. Now, when you're taking a workflow that needs to be uh, effective and efficient, Simon, you sometimes will have to make decisions that are quite difficult. There might be times when you have to not only open stores, but also close them. There might be times when somebody who has tried to, uh, to uh, change themselves in order to be employed is not quite ready and they're not quite able to, to do the thing that is required. How do you take the balance between the human services uh, area, which runs on empathy and a desire to help, but also run a business and make some decisions that, um, that might not always um, uh, allow you to do the thing that you want? How do you deal with that? Yeah, I mean, in, in terms of the, you know, the individuals who, who come in and, and, you know, that we want to, to help them get, get back on track and, and get connected to a job and, you know, and, and job is more than, it's more than earning just a, a, a check, you know, uh, and particularly for a lot of the individuals that we serve, it's, it's about um, value and, and feeling connected to something and feeling like individuals can, can contribute. Um, it's about a quality of, quality of life um, and, and self-worth. Um, so, you know, we, we do have to make um, tough decisions, but all of those tough decisions in the interest, um, we hope, working with that individual to, to make the right decision about what that individual is ready for right now. Um, you know, it, 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 
it does not help to put someone in a position where they're not going to be able to succeed. Um, and that happens with that individual, um, you know, and I want to be very clear about that because we really try to provide services alongside those individuals, not just telling individuals what's, what's good for you or what's not good for you. Um, you know, we, we don't want to be the people that say, hey, we know what's best for everybody. It's, it's always in partnership with communities or with those individuals that we serve. Uh, but sometimes, you know, the things that they, they might want to do or, or, or might uh, say that they're interested in right now after doing an inventory, after doing an assessment and having some conversations, um, you know, we might have to have other conversations. I mean, things, we might have to address other um, emergency needs, other uh, personal supportive service needs before someone can be successful. Um, and, and sometimes that is a, a hard conversation. But Mark, um, I will tell you, Mark, I, I will focus tell you. on what's right for that person. There is, there is no better feeling than the assistant store manager I met the other day who came through our youth program, who was lost, who didn't have an opportunity and came through our youth program and she's now soon to be a store manager on that road. There's no better feeling when you, when you go to a graduation of LA Rise and have 20 individuals who have been incarcerated who are telling their life story and their appreciation for an opportunity and then get a certificate, um, a retail training certificate for three weeks of training and then they get an opportunity to work in our stores. I mean, it's, there's no better feeling. So some things are difficult, but there, there are far more successes and, and things to be really encouraged about. Well, this is something that we learned from our families, right? Recovery help is not an event, it's a process. And it, it's unglamorous. There, are, there is backsliding. Uh, there is complexity beyond complexity that, that we have to deal with. And that's the thing. We have to, as Americans, pay attention to these issues. Otherwise, we don't solve them. Otherwise, we, we declare ourselves willing to have this uh, tool, dual track society of people who never need help and who grow up in circumstances that, that are advantageous and those who don't. Right? So we, we really do have to concentrate on this. Patrick, could you set us up for Thursday's discussion? Because we're going to get down and dirty into frontline uh, activities. And uh, what I'd like to do is I'd like to have you set us up. Uh, Simon, if you could comment, and then we'll, we'll uh, exit with, with Jessica from the board perspective in terms of, of, uh, of how this organization uh, is, is really fitting into this LA-wide effort to shift the narrative as we exit COVID. So Patrick, could you set us up for Thursday? Sure, there's, there's no way that this happens without talented, passionate people that are on the front lines um, making decisions and caring for people. Um, you're gonna get much more in depth on Thursday of what, what the processes and programs are. Typically, we have over 70 programs at one time that are, that are, that are in operation. It's remarkable and it takes it takes uh, really talented people to make that happen. And I think, I think you're going to be amazed at the details of, of what goes on uh, when you tune in on Thursday. And we just completed a poll in which um, uh, basically half of the respondents uh, agreed that the two issues are jobs and job training and emergency and low cost housing. Uh, Simon, in terms of how you transform lives, and we're going to be talking about also partners who are employing some of your graduates. Um, how, how, does that, uh, um, how does Thursday's discussion deal with those two really important issues? Well, you know, I, I think most of us understand that the real pathway to um, economic security uh, and economic mobility for, for vulnerable communities is through uh, high quality education and training. Um, you know, that's how people are gonna connect to those good middle skill jobs um, family supporting jobs. Um, and so the conversation moving forward, we're going to talk about, we'll share some examples on Thursday, but the larger conversation is around making sure that vulnerable communities can actually access those high quality um, training programs, education and training programs. Um, and, and that's one of the things we're excited to, to talk about. And Jessica, as you're, as you're seeking to transform uh, Los Angeles and, and, and the city center um, with partners, uh, could you just quickly comment on this idea of nonprofits and this collaboration amongst government, business, and nonprofit actors? Because sometimes we find 
uh, people suggest that nonprofits aren't necessary, government isn't necessary, it can all be private enterprise. There are some other suggestions that it's that, um, that businesses are just uh, uh, greedy and, and we just need to focus on nonprofits. Just talk about the balance amongst these different groups with reference to how goodwill functions. Absolutely. I think, you know, no one sector is going to solve all of our problems. And I think what I appreciate is that um, when government, business, nonprofit, they're all a spoke on a wheel and we need them all participating, sharing ideas to move the wheel forward. And I think goodwill, I'm so honored to be on this and I encourage folks, if you're listening today and are interested in learning more, there are so many amazing ways to plug in. We do need everyone coming together, sitting at the table, working on solutions together, regardless of what industry or field you're in, in order to move our city, not just out of COVID, but to a better place than we were before COVID. So I ask everybody uh, who is attending and bring your friends to come and uh, view Thursday's show, where we'll be talking about uh, talking from the front lines uh, of partners, uh, direct service providers, uh, employees, people who have benefited from this um, the, the, this program that Goodwill offers, and let's learn from goodwill's model in terms of how we can actually affect our communities thank you so much thank you all for participating attendees thank you for for coming in and being part of our show that's the nonprofit report everybody stay safe mask up and we'll see you on thursday <music>